Welcome. Let's talk about some of the key aspects of CPAP titration. So first of all, we'll go through the goals. Next, we'll talk about how CPAP actually works and the titration. The transition between CPAP to bilevel. Next is oxygenation, complex sleep apnea, and periodic limb movements of sleep. So let's get started. First of all, the goals. The goal is to minimize the number of apnea hypopnea index or even the RDIs to less than five. That's the ideal, that's the um, optimal pressure required or CPAP pressure required to achieve an AHI of less than five. Now, preferably, the patient should have at least 15 minutes of sleep at this pressure tested to achieve the goal of uh, RDI AHI of less than five. And the patient should have REM or even REM supine sleep. This would be ideal. The reason is, is in REM and supine sleep is when the patient tends to manifest the worst of their sleep uh, apnea. And if the pressure tested has adequate REM and REM supine sleep, then you can safely say that the patient has a pressure that will work even during the worst of their sleep apnea episodes. The next thing to look at is is how CPAP works. Uh, now, most of the time, the CPAP titration will start off at a pressure of around 5, 6, or 7 centimeters of water, and it will be increased by 1 to 2 centimeters of water. This will be titrated mainly uh, for snoring events in some patients. At times, uh, apneic events of more than 2 that occur, or even um, hypopnic events of more than three that occur over the period of time that the patient's on that set pressure. So the CPAP will then be titrated upwards accordingly. So every time that the CPAP is titrated, there will be a table uh, in most reports that will go along and tell you as well, as these pressures are increased, how many episodes of either respiratory uh, uh, events or even ap apnea events that occur at each pressure is tested. Now, at some point, when patient uh, 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 reaches a CPAP of 15, then the pressure should be transitioned to bi-level. The reason is, as at, at pressures of 15 and above, patients tend to tolerate CPAP a little less due to the constant positive airway pressure that may be overwhelming. So, the transition to bi-level should occur at a level of uh, 15 or above. Uh, also, patients will also sometimes complain even at, at this pressure that the patients find it overwhelming and may be awakened. Arousal indexes as well at this pressure should be looked at. As the patient has an increased arousal index at this pressure, then if the arousal index is elevated, then the patient it could be a sign that the patient is not tolerating higher pressures. So they should be transitioned to bi-level at that point. Oxygenation as well is important. Now, most of the oxygenation events or desaturations that occur associated with sleep-related breathing disorders should improve with the treatment of these events with the, with the CPAP machine. However, if the patient continues to have saturations of less than 90% for more than 5 minutes, uh, despite having the AHI reduced to less than 5, that could be a manifestation of hypoventilation. It could also mean that there's an underlying undiagnosed cardiac or pulmonary disorder that requires further evaluation. So just adding on oxygen will not really solve the issue. It may mask the issue, so further evaluation is definitely required. There will be a certain number of patients who do have uh, persistent hypoxemia that will require oxygen, but it's also best to evaluate for other uh, changes or other disorders that may require a different mode of ventilation. So if they do have uh, episodes of uh, desaturation despite reducing the AHI, the patient needs to be evaluated for hypoventilation, which will require bilevel as a treatment uh, modality. Um, and this, is, this occurs mainly in patients who are morbidly obese, patients who are on opioids, and so on. The next thing we want to talk about is complex sleep apnea. Now, it will be a subset of patients uh, who have obstructive sleep apnea, primarily obstructive sleep apnea, during the baseline portion of the study, that when you slap on the CPAP and you try to titrate them upwards, now the lungs are able to move air in and out more efficiently. Not only do you alleviate the obstructive events, improve oxygenation, there may be, a, may be as well the risk of reducing carbon dioxide levels and becoming hypocapnic, causing them to cut off their respiratory drive. Hence, they transition from obstructive sleep apnea to central sleep apnea. And this is the term complex sleep apnea is used, especially when, they, when during titration. 
Now, some of the some sleep labs may be cautious and will increase their CPAP by only one centimeter of water to avoid this scenario to allow the body to adapt to increasing levels of CPAP. However, some patients will not respond to that. So, two strategies would be to continue put on the patient on, on auto PAP and then get a download in 30 days to evaluate whether the central sleep apnea has persist. The other option is to switch them over to bi level and see whether that helps reduce their number of central events. The other thing is periodic limb movements of sleep. Periodic limb movements of sleep should improve as the obstructive events occur as the, uh, or as, as they're treated. Now the idea is that some of these obstructive events may cause arousals and the arousals lead to uh, limb movements. However, there are some patients who will, persistent, uh, who will have persistent periodic limb movements and further down the road if the patient is put on CPAP and they don't respond to it adequately, periodic limb movement syndrome or, or periodic limb movement of sleep should be further evaluated. Thank you.